we're back with part two. And if you're thinking to yourself, part two, then A, you didn't read the title, and B, you could find that other part on my channel, so you could just click on my name down there and then watch it. Also, yes, I'm filming this on the same day, and yes, I did get a haircut in between filming these parts. <laughs> We're just gonna get right into it and pick up where we left off with Liberia. Liberia is the best at being black and not being colonized. Liberia is the only black state in Africa that was never under colonial rule. Literally the only one. <laughs> it was actually founded as a place for former freed US slaves to go and start their own country and start a life of their own back in Africa, which is partially why the flag resembles the US flag so much. Libya is best at making thick tea. Their national drink is called Nescafe, and it is a tea that is boiled down until it is thicker than a syrup, and it sounds awful. Liechtenstein is the best at having half of their GDP tied up in a single person. <laughs> Christopher Zeller, who sells dental products. His net worth is around 3.1 billion, and the entire GDP of Liechtenstein is 6.2 billion. Also, Liechtenstein's GDP per capita is the second highest in the world. They've got the classic hard-hitting combo of one rich guy and not a lot of other people. <laughs> Lithuania is the best country in the world at having hot air balloons. Vilnius, the capital of Lithuania, has the most hot air balloons per capita in the world. Luxembourg is the best country in the world at having corporate debt and they have a ton of it at 324% of their GDP. However, it's long-term debt that's being used to grow companies, so it's not a bad thing, it's leverage. Luxembourg is also the best at being pragmatic about their holidays. Luxembourg has long celebrated the birthday of the Grand Duke, whose birthday is January 23rd. Later on, Luxembourg said, it, we wanna celebrate when it's nicer out. So they just moved the birthday celebration to June 23rd. Macau is the best country in the world at having no personal space. Macau has a population density of 21,000 people per kilometer squared, or 54,000 people per square mile. Although Macau isn't considered a country by all standards, so this title will go to Monaco for a formerly UN recognized country. But still, the point is, Macau is packed. Madagascar is best at having chameleons with over 50% of the world's total population, and they're the best at having lemurs. All lemur species are endemic to Madagascar. But I can't just say all lemurs are currently there because Zabumafu lived in North Carolina and in my heart. <sighs> Rest in peace, Jovian. Malawi is best at having an incredibly biodiverse lake. Lake Malawi has more species of fish in it than any other species in the world, and almost all of them are endemic. Lake Malawi, fun fact, is also nicknamed Calendar Lake because it is 365 miles long, 52 miles wide, and has 12 main rivers flowing into it. Malaysia is best at having big cave chambers. The Sarawak Cave Chamber is the largest cave chamber known in the world. Estimates of the surface area of the floor are about half a million square feet. Malaysia is also best at having big ass roundabouts. They have the world's biggest roundabout, the Putrajaya Roundabout, which is 3.5 kilometers or 2.2 miles across. At what point do you start calling it just a circular road? <laughs> the Maldives are best at being flat. The average height above sea level for the Maldives is only six feet. This means that if global warming do raise the oceans, the Maldives is the first to go. Also, the Maldives are best at being Muslim by percentage, with 100% of their population being Muslim. And the Maldives are best at relying on tourism, with nearly 40% of their GDP being from tourism, which is going to be hard to obtain when they're entirely underwater. Mali is best at being hot. The average temperature in Mali is 84 degrees Fahrenheit year round or 29 degrees Celsius. Malta is the best at being dense with history. UNESCO declared Valletta, which is the capital of Malta and is also less than a square kilometer in size, the most concentrated historical area in the world with 300 monuments. No doubt put there by a lisping, cheese gorge Maltese eunuch. The Marshall Islands are the best at being a guinea pig for war weapons. The US dropped 67 nukes on the tiny islands between 1946 and 1958. There are still effects of radiation there today, and the US basically blew up an entire island. As stated in the first video, Kazakhstan has been nuked more, but considering the fact that you can fit 15,000 Marshall Islands in Kazakhstan, and they've been nuked over a third as much. Proportionally, the Marshall Islands got 
fucked. <laughs> Mauritania is the best at loving slavery. Mauritania was the last country in the world to abolish slavery in the year 1981. Also, Mauritania is home to the biggest and most conspiratorial rock formation. The Rycat structure is a circular rock feature that was likely a natural dome in the Earth's crust that collapsed in on itself. But it also might be Atlantis. Seriously, look it up. Meridius is the best at having dodos. Or at least they were. Meridius managed to keep the dream alive for dodos until 1662, and it's still their national bird to this day. Mark Twain, when he visited, literally said that Meridius was built first, and then heaven based heaven on Meridius. Mexico is the best at making avocados, soap operas, tequilas, and margaritas. And they have the city with by far the most taxis in it, Mexico City, which has over 100,000 taxis. For comparison, New York has 14,000. Mexico also has the most bullfighting rings in the world with 225. Micronesia is the best at being colorblind. One of the islands of Micronesia, Ping Lap Atoll, has a colorblind rate of 10%. Subsequently, it's the worst place in the world to play red light green. That's a stupid joke. <laughs> Moldova is the best at making big bottle-shaped buildings dedicated to drinks. Moldova has the biggest bottle-shaped building in the world, a 28 meter tall or 91 foot tall strong drink museum. I'm not sure if you count other buildings as being bottle shaped, but given the fact that it's a building that looks like a bottle that is dedicated to drinks, I'll allow it. Monaco is the best at having millionaires per capita. One out of every three people that live in Monaco is a millionaire. They are also the best at using birth control because they have a birth rate of 6.4% or 64 kids per thousand people. They are also the best at being surveilled, with essentially the entire country because it's this tiny ass little city on the coast in France. It has 24 hour cameras and basically every single street has a camera. The entire country is less than a square mile. Nothing personal, Monaco, but I think that you are the most bullshit country. <laughs> this country literally exists as a tax haven for rich people, which is why one out of every three is a millionaire. And somehow this tiny ass little town is just managing to stay a country or a nation state, I don't even know, it's complicated, but somehow the UN recognizes Monaco, so. Mongolia is the best at having personal space. With only two people per kilometer squared, or about one person a mile squared, Mongolia just has a ton of space. They are the 18th biggest country and the 136th most populated country. Mongolia also has the world's biggest statue of a horse. I mean, Genghis Khan is sitting on the horse, but it's the biggest horse in a statue and the statue is 40 meters high or about 130 feet high. Montenegro is the best at having old olive trees. They are the world's oldest and it's been alive for over 2,000 years. Also, Montenegro is the best at having fake princes, at least according to Pamela Anderson. Stefan Cernetic pretended to be Royal Highness Hereditary Prince of Montenegro and he gave Pamela Anderson the title of Countess of Giglio in 2015 and she was honored until it came out that Montenegro had no prince and this guy was just full of shit. <laughs> Morocco is the best in the world at having entirely themed cities. They have a red and a blue city and they are genuinely painted those colors. Like everything. Like it's blue. It is super blue. It might be bluer than this city is red, which is also entirely red. Mozambique is the best at having a highly valuable name in Scrabble. <laughs> Sorry, Mozambique, I didn't know that's a lame fact. I don't know, it's better than some of these places got, to be honest. <laughs> but also on the topic of your name, it's the only country name to have every single English vowel. Myanmar is the best at weighing things their own way. They have their own unit of measurement called the vis, and it is equivalent to about 1.6 kilograms or 3.5 pounds. Also, Myanmar produces the most jade, and they produced the most valuable ruby ring, the Graf Ruby, which sold for 8.6 million US dollars. Namibia is the best at having old deserts. The Namib Desert is considered to be the oldest desert in the world, coming in at 55 million years old. Also, the biggest sand dune in the Namib Desert is called Big Daddy. Yeah, it is. <laughs> they also have the largest population of free roaming cheetahs and the world's biggest shipwreck graveyard called the Skeleton Coast, where it's not underwater, so it's different than what Bermuda has because a lot of them are on the coast. Like you can walk up to them on the beach. It's kind of cool. With the exception of the uh, loss of lives and uh, everything else. But if you ignore those things, kind of cool. Nauru is the best at being fat. 61% obesity rate. It is a tiny island where they eat a lot and they have a great time. That's what they're best at.
Nepal is the best country in the world at having more women than men. They have a ratio of 0.84 men per woman. Also, they have the highest point in the world, although it's technically split with China, and they are the best at being Hindu with 81.3% of their population being Hindu. Also, their flag is easily the most non-traditional, and I love it. Kingdom of the Netherlands, that's pretty cool. The Netherlands is best at being left-handed with 13.2% of their population using their left hands predominantly, and they're the best at long track speed skating. Also, they're the best at being tall with an average male height of around six foot, and also they have the tallest female average height too. New Zealand is the best at letting women vote, passing universal suffrage in 1893, which is literally by far the earliest. Also, they're the best at rugby, at least union rugby, and they are the best at giving towns horribly impossible long names. Welcome to Ta Tama uh, Welcome to Tamatawa Kata Katang Ihanga Kawawa Tama Te Taripu Kaka Piki Manga Hauranaka Upu Akai Wenu Ki Nawa Tuahu Nicaragua is the best at being easy to get lost in. Roads there don't have names and addresses are based on landmarks and distance and direction. So they'll pretty much tell you to go to the church, go south for a block, and then go east two blocks. From my research, this seems like at minimum, very common, if not completely nationwide. The way you address letter and mail is by going from region to town, and then it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and it's not too different from Japanese mail system, but apparently it's much worse. Niger is the best at being kids with 50.2% of their population being under the age of 14. The median age in Niger is 14.8 years old. Maybe that's because they have a birth rate of 47.5% or 475 births per thousand people annually. <sighs> also, Niger has the highest proportion of Jehovah's Witnesses in the world. Nigeria is the best at making NBA shot blockers. Hakeem Olajuwon was born in Nigeria, and he holds the record for NBA blocks. Yep, that's about all I can find on Nigeria. <laughs> North Macedonia, no there is not a Macedonia, just a North one, is the best at adopting wireless internet. The first nation in the world to fully adopt wireless in 2005 and made it publicly accessible in every single school. North Korea is best at being happy and reading and education and being well fed according to all of their own self-reported numbers. But something that is actually true is North Korea has the biggest stadium by capacity in the world. We don't know exactly how many seats are in Room Grotto because it's in North Korea, but at anywhere from 114,000 to potentially as high as 150,000, it is the biggest stadium by seating capacity regardless in the world, and it happens to be in Pyongyang. Also, North Korea is best at building fake villages to lie about being prosperous. Kijongdong Village is a village that is close to the southern Korean border that is literally entirely fake. It is just a bunch of empty boxes and buildings that they ran electricity to because that showed their prosperity, and they had people walking around pretending to live prosperous, healthy lives. This is real. This happened. You could spend literally days talking about the things that North Korea does that are unique and extremely awful, but for the sake of this video, we'll just keep it to they're awful, they're enabled by China, which is the reason they still exist, and I hope to see it abolished in my lifetime. I don't know, what am I supposed to say about North Korea? It's a humanitarian crisis. Norway is the best at being equal in terms of income, education, and healthcare. They are also the best at building long tunnels, and they built the world's longest tunnel, which is 15 miles long, or nearly 25 kilometers. And Norway is the best at getting the hell away from everyone. Bouvet Island, which is actually in the southern hemisphere, is the most remote island on Earth. The next closest land of any kind is Antarctica, which is 1,700 kilometers away, or over 1,000 miles away. The closest inhabited land is 1,400 miles away, or 2,250 kilometers away. And somehow, this place just happens to be Norway. <laughs> Oh, and also Norway is the best at saving humanity's seeds with Svalbard. And you know how much I love Svalbard. Oman is the best at loving Mountain Dew. No, I'm not kidding. 
It's the number one selling and consumed drink in Oman over alcoholic beverages, and it's gotten to the point where it's literally called the alcohol of Oman. Pakistan is the best at having deadly mountains. Most people consider K2 the most deadly mountain in the world with a fatality rate of 10%, but these numbers kind of skew because other mountains have really small sample sizes and more people climb K2 than a lot of these other mountains which actually have higher death rates. But by most metrics, Pakistan has two of the top three most deadly peaks in K2 and Nanga Parvat. Also, Pakistan has the largest volunteer ambulance service in the world and has had it for many years in a row and they are quite proud of it and they should be. Palau is the best at making pollution per capita and they also have a tiny capital, the smallest in fact by population. Only 390 people live there. Oh my God, it is hard to find anything that is just about Palestine and not about the conflict and in relation to Israel. Definitely at least from the list of countries that I'm talking about, the best at not having borders or potentially land, depending on how you look at it. Everyone kind of views their status as differently. I think the UN views them as a state. God, I hope this doesn't come off as insensitive. I mean, this situation has to be the most complex dispute in the world. And uh, yeah, let's move on. Panama is the best at having ships, at least registered ships. Panama is basically considered a safe haven for cruise lines and a lot of other shipping companies because their low taxes and loose worker regulations make it really easy to run a company through there and not have to worry about so much regulation. Although, funny enough, both Bolivia and Mongolia have a ton of registered ships as well and neither of them have a border on a sea or an ocean. They're both entirely landlocked, but they have more cruise ships than a lot of other people. Papua New Guinea is the best in the world at speaking whatever language they want with over 839 living languages. Also, I can't say that this is just unique to them, but they have poisonous birds in Papua New Guinea. I had no idea that was possible. Poisonous birds! Paraguay is the best at having a big navy and no coast. Paraguay has the biggest navy in the world among nations that are completely landlocked. Their entire navy is essentially river-based because they use it to control criminal trade and activity. So it checks out. Peru is best at having alpacas. Three out of every four alpacas live in Peru. Also, potatoes are originally from Peru. So you could thank all of your starch cravings on Peru. The Philippines are the best at staying married because divorce is illegal there. It's the only country in the world that has banned divorce. Also, the Philippines is best at having dense cities. Manila is the densest city in the world with a population of 119,000 people per square mile. The next two most dense cities in the world are also in the Philippines, Pateros and Mandaluyong. Also, the Philippines is the best in the world at texting, sending an estimated 142 billion texts per year, earning the nickname the texting capital of the world. Poland is the best of the world at making big castles, at least by land area. Molbar Castle is huge and it's in Poland and honestly, it's pretty beautiful. Also, Poland is the world's biggest exporter of amber. And frankly, I have, n what do you even do with amber now? Isn't that just for ants? What is this, an export for ants? Portugal is best at selling books for a long time and they have the world's oldest bookstore to prove it in Lisbon. Bertrand's Bookstore, which was established in 1732. Also, Portugal makes the most cork, and they hold the record for the shortest reigning monarch in history, with King Louis Felipe reigning for 20 minutes. His dad was assassinated, and then Louis Felipe died 20 minutes later from injuries in the attack. Yeah, I never said it was a happy reign, it just was the shortest. Qatar is the best country at not having a lot of Qataris, because Qatar's population is 70.9% expats. Also because of this, Qatar is the best country in the world at having more men than women with 3.39 men per woman. And they are the best country at not dying with only 1.6% of the population dying annually. Most of the people that live there are just there for work. And then maybe they leave later. And most of these dudes are just single dudes. Also they're the best place for inflation with a negative inflation rate of 2.72%. Leaving cash in your cushions is gaining more interest than most savings accounts around the world. Romania is the best at building wooden churches. They have the tallest entirely wooden church in the world that is 257 feet tall. But also Romania said, we're tired of building things out of wood and built the world's heaviest building, the Bucharest Palace of Parliament, which has 1,100 rooms, eight underground levels, and a nuclear bunker attached by 20 kilometers of tunnels, weighing in at an estimated 4 million tons or 9 billion pounds. Russia is the best at having forests. 20% of the world's forests to be exact. And by exact, I mean, that's not exact at all. We don't have an accurate figure, but it's a good guess. Also, they're the best at being East and they're the best at being big and getting bigger. Yay! God, I'm sorry, Ukraine. Also, Russia is the best at having the biggest, deepest lake in the world, 
Lake Baikal, which is nuts. Lake Baikal has more water in it than all of the American Great Lakes combined. Combined. This is largely because it's huge and it's over a mile deep. But with all these natural achievements, it's worth noting that Russia has likely created the most polluted place on earth, Lake Karake, which without proper protection would kill you in about an hour from radiation poisoning. Your DNA would denature in an hour. This is a picture of Lake Karake in like the 50s. Look at this place. It's hell on earth. Also, Russia is the best at having marriages fail with 73% of their marriages ending in divorce and they have the most tanks and nukes. Rwanda is the best at having women in political power. 62% of Rwandan government is female. Rwanda is also one of the only nations in the world that has a national day dedicated to everyone cleaning up and doing community service, even the president. And this is something that I can get on board with big time. It would never happen in the US, but it would be a great idea. St. Kitts and Nevis is the best in the world at rebranding their mountains. They have two and the tallest one was formerly named Mount Misery. <laughs> and they renamed it to Mount Liamawiga, which translates to Fertile Land. Oh my God, it was hard to find something for St. Kitts and Nevis. <laughs> I haven't watched the other videos on YouTube that are the same premise as this one, but I was so desperate to find anything for this place that I did try to find it in their videos and they literally skipped it. <laughs> it could have been somewhere else in the video because I, like I said, I didn't watch the whole thing or almost any of it, but I'm pretty sure they just straight up skipped it. And this is actually a country. St. Lucia is the best at progressive naming, being the first country in the world to be named after a woman. Also, St. Lucia is the best at having handicap accessible volcanoes with the world's only drive-in volcano. Finally, the handicap can go visit the burning pits of a volcano. St. Vincent and the Grenadines is the best at cooking breadfruit. It's their national meal, and I didn't know we were just putting food nouns together for foods. Samoa is the best at screwing the calendar over for business. In 2011, Samoa literally skipped a day so they could be on the same day as Australia and New Zealand, just so it would be easier. And honestly, I get it. San Marino is best at being old as a nation, since about 301 BC. Also, San Marino is widely considered the worst national soccer team. Sao Tome and Principe is best at having little Ibises and big sunburns, each being the biggest or smallest for their respective species. Saudi Arabia is the best at not having rivers. There are 19 countries that don't have permanent rivers, but Saudi is by far the biggest of them. Coincidentally, Saudi is the best at being a desert. Also, Saudi Arabia has Mecca, which is one of the largest pilgrimages and one of the most important pilgrimages to one of the largest religions in the world. And they have the world's largest sand desert, the tallest water fountain, and largest desalination plant. Senegal is the best at loving sheep. The most popular show in Senegal, or at least it was for several years running, is called Carby, and it is a competition to find the most beautiful ram or sheep. It's also a common tradition to let your sheep play on the beach on Sundays. Serbia is the best at making expensive ass cheese. Pulchis, which is my best guess at the pronunciation, is made exclusively from Serbian goats in the Zasavika Natural Reserve, and it costs $600 per pound. Seychelles is best at having big turtles. Esmeralda, and Aldabra, who is a he, weighs over 670 pounds, or 304 kilograms, and is potentially over 170 years old. He lives on Bird Island, which is an island in Seychelles, with the largest population of Aldabra tortoises in the world. Seychelles is also home to the world's biggest nut, the Coco del Mar. Coco del Mar is basically a giant double coconut, and it looks like a massive pair of hairy balls, and it weighs up to 44 pounds, or 20 kilograms. Sierra Leone is best at exporting blood diamonds, at least back in the day. The movie Blood Diamonds, which has Leonardo DiCaprio in it, was set in Sierra Leone thanks in large part to it being one of, if not the largest export of conflict diamonds in the world during the time period when diamonds were being traded for weapons to fight wars in Africa. It's a whole mess, and it's a good thing that it is at least largely diminished, if not gone. Singapore is the best in the world at having indoor waterfalls with the two tallest waterfalls that are inside a building. <laughs> One is 35 meters and the other is 40 meters respectively, and one of them is made by funneling rainwater on a big glass roof down into a funnel, and it's kind of awesome. Singapore is also the largest city-state in the world. The other two city-states are Vatican City and Monaco, and Vatican City isn't formally recognized by the UN, and Monaco is just f***ing weird. Slovakia is the best at having a capital that borders other countries. Its capital, Bratislava, directly borders Austria and Hungary and is the only capital in the world that borders two other countries. Although Slovakia, Austria, and Hungary were all part of Austria-Hungary until 1918. Slovenia is the best at saving the bees. Almost 5% of Slovenians keep bees, 
or one in 20. So much ridiculously higher than every other nation or state. The Solomon Islands are the best at having big saltwater lagoons. The Morovo Lagoon is the world's biggest saltwater lagoon at nearly 270 miles squared. Somalia is the best at being corrupt. Somalia got a score of 12 out of 100 on the Corruption Perception Index in 2020, and that is actually insane. <laughs> South Africa is the best at making urban forests. The forest in Johannesburg, which has over 6 million trees, is thought to be the largest man-made urban forest on Earth. Basically, they took a whole bunch of trees from somewhere else and planted all of them in Johannesburg. Also, South Africa is essentially the best at having the biggest of every animal live there. Giraffes are the tallest, white shark is the biggest fish, elephants are the biggest land mammal, ostrich is the biggest bird, Cory Bastard is the heaviest flying bird, Eland is the biggest antelope, and leatherback turtle is the largest reptile, and all of these call South Africa home. South Korea is the best at short track speed skating, archery, also the best at being old when you're born, because when you're born, you are one in Korea. They got quite the head start. South Sudan is the best at being the new kid on the block, being established in 2011. Also, South Sudan is the best at oral history. Given that the literacy rate in South Sudan is estimated to be only 27%, which is the lowest in the world, Spain is the best in the world at making truffles. They are also the best at having food fights. They hold the biggest annual food fight in the world, La Tomatina, where people throw over 100,000 tomatoes at each other. Sri Lanka is the most progressive country in the world for female leaders. They were the first to ever freely elect a female leader in 1960 when they elected Siri Mavo Banda Ranaiki. <laughs> I'm sorry, Siri. <laughs> she would end up being re-elected to three terms and rule until the year 2000. Sudan is the best in the world at having pyramids. Yes, they have more than Egypt. Sudan has between 200 and 255 pyramids within its borders, and Egypt has only 138. Only, that's like a ton. But yeah, Sudan has more. Suriname is the best at having scantily clad people on their coat of arms. If you're wondering why this is so specific, it's because I'm thoroughly convinced that Suriname has absolutely nothing unique about it when it's compared to every other nation. You know I'm putting in effort when I'm looking through every single country's coat of arms to see which one has the most naked person on it. <laughs> and Suriname's is the most naked. They're just wearing a little no loincloth. Sweden is the best in the world at having lots of islands. They have 221,000 islands, although part of me thinks that maybe Canada just didn't count. Also, they are the best at building hotels out of ice, with the aptly named Ice Hotel, that is in, oh god, Lucas Yarvi, spanning 6,000 meters squared. They're also the best at making big scale models of our solar system. They have the world's biggest, which is over 300 kilometers across from the sun to Pluto. Switzerland is the best at being employed, and the best at having personal debt, and also they're the best at bobsledding. Syria is the best at having the most babies. Their population grew 5.32% in 2021, and also they're the best country at having people flee. With 6.8 million refugees worldwide due to the ongoing civil war, Man, the format of this video makes me say some pretty insensitive sounding sentences. They are the best at having people flee. Jeez. <laughs> Taiwan is the best at having citizens not consider themselves citizens of the country that they are in. Taiwan is officially a province of China, at least by the UN, but the people of Taiwan don't consider themselves Chinese, or at least they consider themselves truly Chinese. Basically, they consider themselves the Republic of China and not the Communist China, which is considered to be the false China, or the People's Republic of China, which is the Communist Party. It's really complicated, but yeah, they don't they don't consider themselves China, even though the UN considers them China. Oh, also Taiwan's garbage trucks play music like ice cream trucks, so it's the best at setting up kids for disappointment. Tajikistan is the best at building what will be the world's tallest dam. When it's completed in like six years or something, it will be 335 meters tall. Tanzania is the best at losing wars really fast. The Anglo-Zanzibar War between Tanzania and England lasted about 40 minutes when the British wanted a different ruler in place and the Sultan did not want to give up his power. So naturally, the British started blasting. And after about 40 minutes, the Sultan gave up and the war was over. Thailand or Thailand, if you're from the south, are the best at having big snakes, with the reticulated python being the biggest in the world, and they also have the smallest mammals, the bumblebee bat. Also, a Thai woman set the world record by spending 33 nights and days in a small glass room filled entirely with scorpions. So I guess they're the best at that too. Timor Leset, or East Timor, is the best at being short, with the average male height of only five foot three inches, and the average female height is four foot 11. 
That is almost an entire foot shorter than the tallest nation's average. Togo is the best at turning old electronic waste into teachers. Sam Koto, a young Togolese inventor, created a startup that took old electronics and then literally pieced them together Iron Man style to make a robot teacher. No, I'm not kidding. It's awesome. It's literally a teacher and it asks questions to students and it can be used by other teachers for distance learning. It's pretty wild. Tonga is the best at having a fat leader. King Taufahuahu, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Taufahu Tupau the fourth weighed in at 460 pounds at his heaviest, making him the heaviest monarch in the world. However, before he died, he did manage to lose 40% of his weight. Trinidad and Tobago is the best at making asphalt naturally which I guess we can do. La Brea Pitch Lake is the world's largest natural deposit of asphalt in the world. And apparently the US has harvested some to make roads and somehow the lake replenishes itself. And I have no idea how this works. I had no idea asphalt was naturally occurring. Tunisia is the best at jailing DJs for bad mixes. <laughs> in 2017, Tunisia sentenced a British DJ to a year in prison for remixing the Muslim call to prayer. Turkey is the best at making apricots and hazelnuts and they're the best at oil wrestling, which is their national sport, because normal wrestling wasn't hard enough apparently, or sexy enough if that's what you're into. Either way, it seems like a mess. Turkmenistan is the best at turning dumb mistakes into tourist attractions. The Darvaza Gas Crater, also known as the Gates of Hell, is a constantly burning crater in Turkmenistan that is a result from a mistake when Soviet scientists found a massive pocket of gas and said, F it, let's light it on fire and it will probably burn out in less than a week and it's been over 50 years and it's still burning. Tuvalu is the best at barely contributing to the global economy. Tuvalu contributes about 0.00005% or one two millionth of the global economy. Also, nowhere in the country takes credit cards, only cash. The country also only uses the Australian dollar, which is a bummer for you because turns out there's no ATMs on the island. And that includes the two hotels, which are also the only two restaurants in the country. And also, the only country that offers flights to Tuvalu is Fiji, which isn't an easy place to get Australian dollars. Literally the biggest proportion of their GDP comes from people purchasing rights to the .tv domain name, which they own. That's the biggest portion of their GDP. And it's a country. Uganda is the best at being the most culturally diverse nation in the world. Also, they're the best at having a lot of primates proportional to their population. Ukraine is the best at having deep ass trains. Ukraine has a train line that runs 330 feet or over 100 meters below ground. They're also the best at nuclear reactor meltdowns because Chernobyl was the biggest reactor meltdown in terms of death toll. Although that was the fault of the Soviets and yeah, Russia is trying to take back Ukraine now. Literally there are troops on the border. The world is insane. The United Arab Emirates is the best at not needing nursing homes because only 1.1% of their population is over the age of 65. Also, they're the best at building tall buildings, at least for now, with the Burj, although there's a couple projects that are supposed to be taller, and they have the fastest roller coaster, the Formula Rasa, which can reach up to 240 kilometers per hour or 150 miles per hour. The UK is the best at starting and being in wars. 110, at least. Also, they're the best at having the biggest library in King's Cross with over 170 million items in their catalog. The UK is the best at classic rock with legends like the Beatles, Rolling Stones, and Queen. And the UK is also the best at fantasy writing with Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, and Nardia, all being British authors, as well as maybe just writing period with Shakespeare, Dickens, H.G. Wells, and a bunch more that I'm not gonna talk about because I don't read nearly as much as I should. The US has the most Christians, most debt, most donations, most imports, is the most wept has the most military, most medical research, most biggest companies by value, most movies, most billionaires, most prisoners, most Nobel laureates, most gold medals, biggest stock exchange, most space exploration, most pets, most roads, most fast food, most immigration, most guns, most tornadoes, most hurricanes, and eats the most hot dogs. And I'm just gonna stop here because it's a lot of everything and that's exactly how we do it. Uruguay is the best at eating beef. Per capita, Uruguay eats 124 pounds of beef per year. Also, they have the longest national anthem by lines of music. Their national anthem has 150 bars of music and apparently a large portion of it is a massive roast to Spain and Portugal and Brazil, calling them out as oppressors, making it, in my opinion, the only national diss track. <laughs> Uzbekistan is the best at making tasty melons. The Mirazuchul melon, I hope I pronounced that right, I definitely didn't, has the highest concentration of sugar in a melon and is considered by many to be the best tasting melon in the world. Also, it is the best at being in the stands. All of the bordering nations to Uzbekistan end in stand. 
They are the stan of all the stans. Banatu is the best at having natural disasters of any kind, at least proportional to its size. They get cyclones, volcanic eruptions, floods, earthquakes, tsunamis, droughts, and they suffer from rising sea levels. Vatican City is the best at being most Christian by percentage at 100%. What a shocker. It's also the smallest, if it counts. Who knows, man, it, I don't think it counts. It's, it's in Rome, it's Rome. Venezuela is the best at having reserves of oil and at winning the most beauty pageants. Also, they are the best at having tall waterfalls with Angel Falls. Vietnam is the best at not being obese. They have an obesity rate of 2.1%, which is super low. Also, they make the most cashews and the most black pepper. And also they have the biggest cave in the world by volume, Sundung, I don't know. Yemen is the best at building ancient skyscrapers. The city of Shibam was constructed in the year 300 AD and has 500 towers that are all made out of brick and the tallest is 11 stories tall. It's considered to be the world's first vertically built city, which is actually awesome. Zambia is the best at being mostly national parks with 32% of the total land being national park. Also, they're the best at having mammals migrate with over 10 million fruit bats migrating each year in October, the largest mammal migration in the world. Oh, and also Zambia has the largest and biggest waterfall by volume, Victoria Falls, and finally, Zimbabwe. Holy shit, we're at the end. Zimbabwe is the best at officially not making up its mind when it comes to language with 16 official languages. Why do you need that many? Also, Zimbabwe is the best at making lakes. They have made the world's biggest man-made lake by volume, Lake Kiriba, which is over 2,100 square miles. Ah! It's over! <laughs> Half of these countries are so hard to find anything about that is unique that you could call them best at. It's just absolutely crazy, but I'm so glad that I did it. Thank you so much for watching. Seriously, this was one of the biggest undertakings of a video I've ever done. This video took more time to make than literally walking for 24 hours. So seriously, thank you so much for watching it. Sub if you want to, share if you want to. I don't care, I'm just glad that you made it to the end. Uh, takeaways, learn more about the world. It's an incredibly fascinating place and it's best to not just be wrapped up in your own country and go donate if you want. Thanks for watching, that's the end of the video. Adios.